Let's let everybody come up and uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Ask his blessings upon the service. Good to have everybody here. But most of all, it's good to have the Lord here, ain't it? Amen. 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 How many of y'all come to worship God? Amen. Amen. If you come for an old dead service, come for the wrong place. We don't do that here. We've not got time to play games. Hallelujah. Serious things going on in our world right now. 
serious things going on in people's lives. And you know what? The very one you're pouring oil and wine into their heart and praying for their kids and praying for them tonight, they might be pouring oil and wine in your heart next week. You remember that. That's what we're here for. We're here to help one another. Uh, I've got a family person that's right now I know that her hearts are breaking and uh, got problems going on with her kids and say a special prayer for her tonight because I know God is able to, God's able to do anything. Yes. He can and I know he can save our children and help them and touch them and, and uh, you know sometimes we think well God ain't hearing my prayer but he's hearing your prayer. I promise you he is. It may seem like he's four days late but he'll be right on time. And when all hope's gone, that's when my God shows up. And, uh, but let's do, let's pray for these children tonight. Pray that God will touch them and just bring them into where they need to be at. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray, church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, you got two requests tonight. Get the ushers up here. Take uh, take up our offering. And uh, Carol, they want you all to sing that song. Uh, you got the power in the name of Jesus. You got that with you? All righty, come on in. Hallelujah. 
Lord, bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen.
on where I can see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Natalie. Took me 10 minutes to think of her name. <laughs> That's that, some of that old age stuff that Charles has got to get off on me, I think. <laughs> Amen. I'm just glad to be part of the family of God. I went up to uh, Sneedville, a little place up in Sneedville that I go to to pray. And I go seeking the Lord. The Bible says, seek you the Lord while he may be found. A lot of y'all won't spend five minutes seeking after God. You'd be surprised what you find out if you get out and really begin to seek God. And I was up there and the Lord was putting different people to pray for. And the Lord said, you're going to have a guest today. And uh, so I was uh, up there. Nobody ever comes down the road. And uh, I thought, well, I'm waiting on my guest. And uh, then he said at 11 o'clock. And I thought, well, I was out walking up and down the road in front of the church. 11 o'clock, here come a little motor scooter by with a man on it. And he didn't talk a whole lot, didn't even say a whole lot. He just said, how you doing? Are you okay? I said, I'm fine. And I thought, well, Lord, there's my guests that come by uh, to know that the light of God's shining. You know, Jesus said, let, the, let your light shine that others may see and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The churches lay down a lot with letting our light shine. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He was. But he left it to the church to let their light shine. And sometimes it's the very simple things that we do that mean so much. Sometimes it ain't no more than out on the side of the road passing out a track or saying Jesus loves you to somebody at Walmart or, or just going and, and letting people know, hey, I'm a child of God. Amen, I'd be washed in the blood. Christianity is not something that's in the past. That's what they're saying today. You know, they're building uh, mausoleum churches that multitudes are coming in to hear a speaker with a little charismatic a bit about him and he said well feel good about yourself and he's trying to tell people about a God that he don't even know hallelujah it's time that the church of the living God begins to let their light shine if you're a true born again Christian that's on fire for God you don't have to make it shine glory to God if you love God with all your heart and your soul everywhere you go I praise God your light will begin to shine to the world hallelujah that they might have hope do you realize that the world has lost their hope in this day and time in which we live in they got their hope in man. I'm not going to preach on politics, but I'm saying this. There are a lot of them right now hoping that the, uh, not the Supreme Court, or maybe it is the Supreme Court, whatever it is, don't indict Trump because they're trusting in Trump to be their Savior. Let me tell you what. We don't need another president. Hallelujah, we need the church of the living God to rise up and say Jesus is the answer for this world in which we're living in. See, when I preach, I'm not preaching to the world. So who do you think I'm talking about? I'm talking about the church. I've not got a thing in the world about the man against him. But I'm here to tell you this. Just because somebody holds a Bible, that don't mean they're a child of God. The Antichrist is coming on the scene like it's never come before. And don't you realize, church, those are the very ones. And that's the way he's going to deceive the church of the living God. He'll set himself up like, look at me, what I can do. And people will begin to follow that. I'm just preaching you what the Word says. So are we ready today? Top of my message that the Lord gave me, or I guess it's His message, is are we ready? Why don't you turn over to 2 Peter to start with. I've got a little bit of reading I want to do, the Lord willing. But are we ready? I've said so many times, Back in 2000, our country got a jolt, didn't it? It didn't just jolt our country, it jolted the whole world. 
when the World Trade Center was bombed, or 2001, the year before that, 2000, they put the scare into people. Don't you realize that the devil operates by fear? If he can bring you into fear, he'll control your life. Amen. We don't serve fear, but glory to God, we got faith. Hallelujah. The opposite of faith in God is nothing but fear. And God said, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but hallelujah, power and of love and of a sound mind. Glory to God. Praise God, they call us crazy, but we're the only ones with a sound mind. Amen. You know why? We choose Jesus. But in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, Paul was right, or Peter was writing. And it was a warning to the church. This Bible wasn't written. It was written for people to come to Jesus. But they'll never understand it. The world, you know who got everybody writing new Bibles? The world did. Well, we can't understand it. Well, we'll make it easier for them. People were wanting a, a notch on their belt, you might say. Or somebody to say, we've got this many at church. It don't matter how many's here or how many we get in the building. It's those that we get to the cross of Calvary. Yeah. Hallelujah. Get the blood applied to the life church. But Peter was warning them. He said this second epistle, beloved I now write unto you in both which I store up your pure minds by the way of remembrance. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. And of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Paul, Peter was writing the second epistle. Y'all know the story of Peter? He denied Christ. Oh, but I thank God when Jesus rose from the dead, the first thing he did, he told Mary, go tell Peter and my brethren, glory to God that I've risen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He was, God had told Peter and told the apostles to warn the church of the living God. And in this day and time in which we're living, glory to God, I love to preach about heaven. I love to preach about the streets of gold. I love to preach. I wish we could say we ain't never going to have no problems. The rapture's going to happen. We're going to be out of here. But the Bible said these are they that have come up through great tribulation. They've washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. It's not always that the streets of gold is going to get us. It might get us happy. But we need to hear what God is trying to tell us in the church that we might be ready. See, I'm ready for the streets of gold. I made preparation on my knees. I got born again. I've already got that behind me, glory to God. But hallelujah, the things that's coming upon the earth right now. Are we ready for it, church? See, so you don't hear a lot of this preached about, do you? You don't hear Matthew 24 preached about anymore. People say, well, they take them over here and put them in the north. Well, you can't grow a church and you can't grow a, a congregation of preaching about Matthew 24. No, but you can sure take a lot of people to hell by not preaching it. You can have people that's not ready. I want you to be ready. One thing I learned as a kid, be ready for anything because anything might happen. I told the story. My mama kept a little old brown paper bag packed with clothes because we never knew where we was going, where we'd be staying the next night. She'd say, keep your bags packed. Buddy, I've seen the time we took off of that little brown bag with a handful of clothes in it, and I learned through that, hallelujah, to be ready that whatever might come. There's a lot of people think they're ready. That they ain't ready. They're sitting around backbiting in the church. You ain't ready. They're sitting around trying to control. Well, that ain't control, Brother Charlie. Yes, it is. When you get in rebellion and you make up your mind, I'm going to do it my way regardless of what God said. That's rebellion. And praise God, it'll come upon you and your sorrow will be so great. 
Let me tell you what. I pay for a lot of things, and I'm paying for them right now. But I'm on my knees every day, repenting for the same thing over and over, saying, God, I'm sorry. I knew the way, Lord, and I didn't walk that way. See, at the time that I was making allowances, because I heard somewhere, God knows us. God knows what's in our heart. I heard that, and I thought he gave me a right to not be totally obedient to the word of God. But glory to God, let me tell you what, when it comes home, it ain't no fun. And if you're a child of God, you know when you begin to reap a harvest that you've sown in your life, you know about it. But what you do about it, Brother Charlie, you cry out for grace. You just pray, God, give me grace and give me mercy, Lord. But Peter was young, he goes on to say here. He says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the foundation, from the beginning of creation. For this they are willingly, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were unknown, and the earth standing out of the waters and in the waters, whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. See, all this is kept in store for a great day that's coming. What's it in store for? Reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of the ungodly men. Glory to God, they're going to be a judgment day, my friend. Amen. And how are you going to be judged? Are you going to be a child of God? Or did you just get enough religion to make you think you was going to heaven, but truly you don't have no love for God or anything else? All you think about is satisfying your flesh. All you think about is what's going to make me happy. There never was a day in our country, I remember back whenever I was a kid, I thought if you had a million dollars, buddy, you was rich. We talk about getting a million dollars when we was kids. If I had a million dollars, a million dollars ain't nothing anymore. By the time you buy a car and a house, you broke again. But let me tell you one thing. If you've been washed in the blood, woo, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah! You've got something. Glory to God, that'll be greater than anything you've ever seen. He said, Arise and not even seen. It's not even entered the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love Him. For those that love God. God's trying to warn the church right now. He's trying to tell people, trying to warn some of y'all, you need to make sure you're ready. Yeah. Jeremiah spoke a scripture. He said, if you can't run with the footmen, what are you going to do when the horses begin to run? But you y'all found out you didn't do too good with the footmen, did you? I didn't either. When old Corona come around, <laughs> sounds like that Mexican beer they sell. <laughs> you know, all that was was fear. All that was was fear from the devil. That's all it was. It was people trying to control your life and my life. Trying to show us, hey, we've got greater. But praise God, thank God we as the church stood up. And we said, greater is he. Hallelujah, that's in us. Then he that's in the world. See, the Lord didn't want you to get scared. And if you stayed at home, that's fine. Do what you had to do. That I'm not preaching about that. But you shouldn't have been afraid. Woo, glory to God of what was going to happen. Brother Charlie, what's the end going to be? I don't know about you. Woo, glory, but I know about me. The trumpet's going to sound, glory to God. And we're going to rise up. And we're going to leave this world. That's what the end's going to be. That's what my end's going to be. There's a lot of them that the judgment of God is reserved for them because even now they're making a mockery of the things of God. They're saying, where's your God at? 
Oh God, and some, some people that's been washed in blood, true Christian, they've been led astray by the world. And they think everything's okay. But it ain't okay. And God's trying to warn you. You better make sure it's okay. Glory to God, let me tell you something. If there's anything in my life, rebellion, if I've talked about somebody, whatever it might be, praise God, I want to get it out right here tonight. Praise God, because it may be my last night. It may be your last night. That's the way we got to live this thing. It ain't got no time to play around and think, well, it might be 30 years before Jesus comes back. It might be, but it may be 15 minutes from now. Woo, Lord of God, that the clouds of glory burst is open. And where are you going to stand at? He said, well, I'm, I'm saved. I'll stand proud. You may not. When you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, then you will stand there. And he says, Steve, Jane, you know the right way. Why did you do that? You know what you're going to do? See, a lot of you folks think, well, I'm going to stand my head. And God, praise God, look at me, God. I'm saying great for you. No, you won't. Every one of us will hang our head and we'll say, Lord, without your mercy, we could have never made it this far, God. But it don't give us an occasion to not be godly people. It says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. See, what I'm telling you there, you don't know when your day is coming. That's what the Bible's telling you here. Well, God counts a thousand days for every day. So this, uh, no, that's not what it's saying at all. It's telling you, you don't know. You don't know when your day's up. You don't know when you're going to stand before Almighty God. So you better make sure it's ready now. That's what that scripture is saying. Glory to God, get ready. It says the Lord's not slight concerning his promises. Some men count slightness, but his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dis dissolved. What manner of person ought you to be in all holy, this and this conversation and godliness? What manner of man ought you to be in all manner of, of conversation? See, some of our conversation ain't fit for the house of God. And if you can't say it from the pulpit, you ain't got no business talking about it with nobody else. Amen. See, you, you think you get away with gossip. You won't get away with it. You're robbing your own heart by being judgmental and thinking I'm okay. God knows where I'm at. I don't care what they do. God said, I'm the judge. You leave it alone. See, I'm trying to tell you how to get the little foxes out of the hen house. See, it's the little foxes that rob the vine. Oh, you may have never thought about committing adultery, but you gossip all the time. You'll be judged as what you do. And you know what? It'll rob your life as a Christian down here. That's what Peter and First and Second Peter, Thessalonians, Ephesians, all these books was warning the church, get ready. Get ready. Quit playing around. Get ready for what's coming. Christ is coming for a church without spot, without blemish. You say, well, I ain't perfect. I ain't either. But I'm in my heart. See, you know what God's calling perfect? Be ye perfect. Your Father in heaven is perfect. See, our flesh ain't perfect. But what we got inside better be perfect. It better be. We better have a perfect heart toward God. If you could sit around and do everything in the world with no conviction on your heart then you're in trouble. God said to give us the Holy Ghost to lead us and to guide us into all truth. 
He'll lead you in the truth. And I know there's some things that are harder to get rid of than other things. But you got to just keep bringing it to the Lord. Amen. You got to keep bringing it to the Lord, saying, God, I'm trying. And get back up and stand up as a child of God. But in your heart be perfect and say, Lord, I am more than a conqueror and I'm going to overcome this area of my life. Yeah. I remember years ago, there's this woman, Kyle, and she has family. Love them. They don't like me preaching on my family, but that's all I got to preach on anymore. <laughs> but she, Kyle, there was a time that we'd talk about the Lord all the time. But then it went astray. And then we got to gospel. You say, Brother Charlie, you gossiped? I have. But, buddy, I'll tell you what. I get off that phone, I feel so dirty, I'd go pray. Finally, you know what my prayer changed from? It went, Lord, forgive me. Lord, don't let her call me no more. Stop the phone calls, Lord. But you know what I had to do? He didn't stop the phone calls. I had to take charge over the phone calls. When they headed towards gossip, I'd change it to Jesus. And I would direct it all the way back to the Lord. And you know what? The next thing I knew, we were both delivered from gossip. See, that's how you get delivered from things. You don't do it. He says, looking for the hastening until the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. So what's the Lord looking for? A blameless church. He's looking for a blameless person. Praise God. You know what keeps us from being blind? It's repentance in our heart. See, they got a doctrine going on right now. And, and preachers, one preacher I know, and I won't mention his name, I've listened to him for 40 years. And he's getting the up and he said, repentance has nothing to do with your salvation. And I think, what are you talking about? The first thing Jesus said, repent. The first thing John the Baptist come out of the wilderness, preaching repentance. Repentance means to give it up, turn away from it. And if it don't have nothing to do with salvation, then we all lost. Because you don't get in to the body of Christ. You say, well, the Bible says if you'll believe. If you'll read over there, I was reading today in the book of Acts, that jailer that got saved in his whole house, you know what the Bible said? Paul told him, he said, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe, call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and now in the house to be saved. The very next verse says, then they took the word to him, preached the word to him, told him about Jesus. They had to hear the word to be saved. And they had to believe the word. It wasn't just going down and saying, God, you got you a treasure here. Look at me. I finally come to you. No. It was people that were broken. Me included. The church of the living God needs to be broken. We do. We need broken hearts and broken and contrite spirits to break us. Okay? Are we ready? I'm going to read just a couple more verses. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The Bible was telling these people so that they could, that they could get ready. God's telling us so we can get ready. You say, Brother Charlie, beat us Wednesday night. I get so sick of hearing people talk about sheep beaters. Well, I, I, when I first got saved, I couldn't even squash a roach bug. I don't say anything to try to hurt anybody. I promise you I don't. But if it comes and touches your heart, that's the Holy Spirit of God. That's God showing you it's wrong. It ain't me up here trying to make myself any higher than you. I'm messed up just like you are. But praise God, I look to God to clean me up and get me ready. First Thessalonians. He said, but the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a sleep in the night. You know that, don't you? You know how? I just read it to you over there, Alan Peter. Didn't I? So you know the Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. Okay? So we don't have no excuse, do we? Don't have no excuse. 
It says, for when they shall say, who will say it? The false prophets and false teachers. But when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You know, we live in one of the most unpredictable times that I've ever lived in. I remember when I was a kid back in the early 60s. I can't go back much further than that. You can ask Charles or Joyce, they'll know. But. <laughs> The biggest problem we had was the Cuban Missile Crisis. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all, how that they stood over there and we had a, a man of God. Our president back then was a man of God. And he stood up and he said, if you don't have them out of there, we're going to bomb you. And you know what? They got their ships out of there, didn't they? They moved them on. But look what's going on now in our world. We got... The rocket man sitting over there, he don't care what President, uh, uh, what's his name, says. He don't care what anybody says. He's going to shoot his rockets regardless. And you know what? He's doing it. He is. And one of these days, he'll shoot one over to see how far it'll go. And it might be right in the middle of the White House. And it might be right in the middle of Knoxville, Tennessee or Oak Ridge. That's a crisis, ain't it? We're going through that. We got fires burning acres and acres of land right now. We got hurricanes and tornadoes tearing everything up. Our little United States is in a crisis. Everything in the world going on. The politics don't even know what they're doing. We ain't got nobody. I don't know nobody. But Jim is supposed to be a president. I don't. Who have we got? We're in trouble. We are. Are we ready? Matthew said, when you see all these things come to pay, know ye that the time is near. It's even at the door. Church, it's time to pray like we've never prayed before. And quit taking what we see. God gives us these things. He said the Holy Ghost would show us things to come. You know what the Holy Ghost is trying to show the church? Watch out for rocket men. Watch out for those storms. New Orleans, back several years ago, when they had that great earthquake. Them people silly anyways. They might have built something two foot under sea level. Ain't got a lot of sense anyways. You know? Big old hurricane come. And you know what the first words? The storm was over. They said, we beat it. They said, we're having our Mardi Gras in two weeks. And about that time, the docks begin to break. Whew, Lord, our God, you don't mess with God, my friends. Amen. You don't think you're going to escape because you won't. About that time when the water started coming in, they had no control over it. New Orleans realized we stood against the wrong one this time. And then they wanted to, got over there in that big old ball field thing, whatever. They're so proud of. After about five days, they weren't that proud of it anymore. And wanted to blame everybody else. Well, they didn't have their Mardi Gras in two weeks. See? Heard a guy the other day talk about, well, we get to hell, we're going to have a party. You ain't partying in hell, I promise you that. You better party with everything you got right now, sinner. As I like to say, you better drink every Budweiser you can drink. You better smoke every joint you can smoke. Because hell don't have any of that down there. And you'll burn in torment forever and ever. If I was lost without God, I'd probably be a pill pop, popping, joint smoking, Budweiser, Michelob drinker. 
But glory to God, I got enough sense to know judgment's on the way. Hallelujah, I had enough sense to know as a young man, call upon the Lord. Hallelujah, he'll save you. See, I say this all the time. People worried, people worried. Let me tell you what, the day I got saved, I never worried one time about going to hell again. I worry about what I might have to pay for down here if I'm not obedient to God's word. But I don't worry about that. I don't worry about what the government's going to do. During the corona, I was talking to a lady over at Walmart. And I, I said, boy, I'm sure glad all these masks are over with. She said, me too. I said, I couldn't believe everything, all the fear they tried to bring. And I said, if you're a child of God, you ain't got nothing to worry about. She said, you're right, brother. She said, let me tell you something. During the corona, I was blessed more than I ever was. The church of the living God was blessed during that time. Did you go without a meal? The devil was sending everybody checks. Did you get your check? <laughs> we paid for it big time. I told people. I said, they ain't giving you nothing. But when that guy's price went up nearly $5, we was like, pay him back quickly. But see, that wasn't our Savior. That wasn't our Savior. It wasn't the church's Savior, was it? I said, I'd have ate the same if it never gave me a check. I'd have had, I'd, I wasn't hungry. My light bill was already paid. I didn't need that. I could have did without it. I enjoyed it. I think I gave mine to my kids and grandkids. That's what I enjoy doing. They say, brother, shit, give your money away. Why not? I can't take it with me. Hallelujah, I don't need no money when I get to heaven, Jesse. Praise God. I didn't have me a card here. I got me a free pass. <laughs> Lord, God, going to buy one. I'll save one for $100. Give you a free pass from hell. Lord to God, you don't have to go. Thank you, brother, for my free pass. See, God's got something for the church. But you know what? If you're not ready, when it comes, then, then you're going to have it harder. You are. You're going to be struggling during that time. But the Bible's warning us here everywhere. Let me read this other. In the book of Jude, it warns about people coming. Then we'll read verse 13. It said, uh, or wait a minute, let's see. It says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. You know, he's talking about all these old false prophets, Benny Hens and Jesse Duplantis, and Joe Osteens, and all them. They're speaking everything in the world. They're trying to get your money. Glory to God. Say, Brother John, don't call their names out. If I could remember more, I'd give you more of them. The Bible says, if you see the wolf coming, warn the people. I'm warning you tonight. If you're sending money to Joe Osteen, you're sending money to the devil. Ooh. Did you get that, YouTube? If you're sending money to Jesse Duplantis to buy him another jet, you're sending money to the devil. They come out from us, but they were not of us. For had they been of us, they would have continued with us. But they ran in the ways of Cain and in the ways of Balaam. They took on the spirit of their father. That's what they did. He's warning us here. These people, they're still here. Verse 12. They are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withers without fruit. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints, 
to execute judgment upon all and to commit all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which they which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth swelling great, swelling words, having men's person in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember the words which was which were spoken before the apostles and of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there shall be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensually, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. How are we going to overcome these last days? You're going to learn how to pray. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll learn how to pray, Jim. We will. I know I bring people up, and I wouldn't even hear them, but I, 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 I feel people's hearts, what they go through. And I don't even know where Jim was at that time, but I know Tim back here. They ain't a man in the church any greater person than old Tim back here. But there was a time he was laying in the hospital with no hope, and he had a daddy that knew how to pray. Where either he learned how to pray, I don't know how it is. He prayed. Somebody prayed. And is this dad that loved his kid. And he prayed. Tim could have died. But because of the prayers of the righteous. Woo! God moved. And when we get that in our heart. You know what? God will move. He will. I pray for my grandson every day. I pray for him. I cry out. I don't pray for him one time a day. I pray for him every three minutes. I'm crying out. God, please save my grandson. Please get my grandson back in church. I worry about it. I do. I worry about it. I, I don't know what he's doing. He's not doing anything bad. He's working. But you know what? When people say, well, I would come, but I, I got to work. And they got to work every time. They don't work on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and 24 hours a day. I worry about them. Because I know Satan would like to deceive them say, well, you're okay. I've heard so many hypocrites that used to be in church sit back and say, well, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. That makes me sick at my stomach. It does. It's people that don't know my God's what it is. I run to church on Wednesday night. I run to church on Sunday. I need it. I have to go to church. I've told you people that. I have to be here. If not, you'd have you a backslidden preacher. How would you feel if you come in here on Sunday morning? Where's Brother Charlie? Well, I decided to take me a day off. I had a deacon, and I'm glad he's gone. He is a deacon here at this church. He laid out, well, one service I can understand. Second service, I was at his house finding out what was going on. Let me tell you what, these people that have positions in the church, you ought to be at church. If you're a deacon, you ought to be at church. If you're a Sunday school teacher, you ought to be at church. I went to him, and I said, what's the matter? Brother, I ain't seen you at church. Well, I, I'm taking time off. I said, you're what? He said, I'm taking time off. I said, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. See, plain speech is easily understood, ain't it? I told him, I said, that's stupid. You can't take time off from God. I told him that. I don't know where his life is right now. But Lord God, we didn't need no deacon like that here at the church. No. Praise God, he might in one of our biggest crises decide he wants to take him time off. I talked to this other lady about the same time. She said, she said, I'm taking a sabbatical. And I thought, what's that? I don't even know what that is. I was done. I was raised in Tennessee. I asked her, I said, what do you mean, a sabbatical? I said, what's a sabbatical? Well, I'm taking me some time off. I looked at her, I said, you're stupid. <laughs> she ain't my friend no more. But, glory to God, I told her the truth. I didn't lie to her about it. I'm not going to lie to you either. You know why I love you? And there's a lot of y'all that's ready. If Jesus was to come right now, you say, glory to God, I'm ready. But if Jesus was to step out on the clouds of glory, 
your heart is melt inside of you because you know you ain't ready. You know that you ain't got ready to fight. See, I used to think too, I used to think, I can handle anything. But there's some things that come up in this whole world you just can't handle. You better know the Lord when you get to that. I think I could fight. We had a guy. Thank the Lord. You know, when you get old, you get slower. You start quick. We had a guy trying to run over us the other night. We went out to eat. We were sitting talking about Jesus. Here they come with Jesus. They're trying their best. They're acting like they're going to run over us. Rebecca scared her to death. She grabbed that phone. Help! <laughs> I wasn't worried about Jesus. I thought they've got him a gun in there. For no reason. Well, there was a reason we were standing over on the sidewalk talking about Jesus, and they didn't like it. They think, oh, old, old Tyler, bold as a lion. He hollered out, Jesus loves you. <laughs> you know what happens when you tell a demon you love them? They back up. <laughs> so here they come back up. I thought, here they come again. But you know what? They may have wanted to, but they couldn't touch us. Amen. They may have hollered out. They may have said what they want. I ain't coming in your neighborhood no more, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Over here off Merchant's Road, watch out for it. <laughs> but let me tell you what, they couldn't touch us. The devil can't touch us unless God allows it to happen. He can't touch us. He can't, he can't blow our house down. Yeah. Like that about the... Three whiffs or four whiffs, how many they was, or no one whiff and three little pigs. Okay, we'll have three little pigs, Jesse and Steve and Gene. Gene built his house on a, with brick. These two wooden straw. You know what, he come, he huffed and he puffed, and he blew their house down. So if you build upon this solid foundation, glory to God, the devil can huff, he can huff, he can declare all he wants to. Woo! But glory to God, he can't blow your house down because you're founded upon a solid foundation. Amen. Where's Emma? Where's that other girl? You girls can sing tonight. Come on up and sing us a song. I'm going to read this scripture with our camera. She got Owen. God's faithful to you, church. But let's get ready. Let's tell everybody, call your kids. Call them. You may say, well, they won't talk to me. Send them a text. Say, you better get ready. Say, hard times is coming. They're coming. He's come back for those that's looking for him. But everybody's going to see him and everybody's going to bow. Yes, Let me just read this to you. 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says, Let no man despise thy youth. Paul was warning Timothy here. He said, Let no man despise thy youth. Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and purity. See, let me tell you what. I ain't no hypocrite preacher, but I can lead you this son. I'm here to be an example to you. To let you know. I ain't going to tell you your God's weak. Your God's strong. I'm going to tell you how great your God is. I'm not going to get here and tell you how low down you are because you fell last week. I'm going to say, get up. Come on. You ain't got time to stay there. Get up and let's go again. Hallelujah, you will overcome it. That's what Paul was telling Timothy. You know, he was telling him, Timothy, he said, be an example to the people. See, let me tell you what. I believe in shouting the praise of God. I don't come in here on Wednesday night to have no dead service. Lord, I God, and I get loud, and I know I do, and I have no apologies. Praise God, it's time we get loud for God. Amen. Hallelujah, it's time we let the world know. We're the church. We're the firstborn. Let me finish this up. Now I'll let them sign. He says, till I, get, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation to doctrine. So what we got to listen to, we got to read, to exhortation to doctrine. Give, give attention to it. Give attention to the doctrines of the Bible, not the doctrines of what people want to say, but what God says. Give attention to it. It says, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy of the laying on of hands of the presbytery. You know what he's saying there? Every once in a while, every one of y'all want to have a testimony. 
Praise God, you ought to be able to stand up and say, Brother Charlie, can I say something? Go ahead. I love Jesus and I'm glad I'm saved. You don't have to preach for 20 minutes, but you ought to have a testimony. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God about what God has done for you. Well, Brother Charlie, that's just not me. I'm ashamed. Get over it. Can't do nothing but do like this. Do like that. Praise God. That's what he's telling them. That gift that's given to you of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God, that gift. Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo! Let it out every once in a while. Get like old Tyler. I make my, he said, they say I march. I said, yeah, your daddy looks like a rocket man, and you going like this, I'm marching like a bunch of soldiers he's got. Praise God. You say, you say stuff, that boy? I'm not going to say anything. Because people know me by now. They either know I'm so senile, I don't know what I'm talking about, or they know that I love them so much that I feel free enough to cut up with them. He goes on to say, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. See, I ain't just trying to get myself into heaven. I want you to go too. Praise God. I want you to go to heaven. I want the world to go to heaven. I want every prostitute, glory to God, to meet me in heaven. I want every drug addict to be there, praise God. I want them to come the way of the cross, glory to God. So it ain't just about me. I'm not buying no jet. Praise God, I'm not up here trying to take your money. Oh, glory to God, but I want to see a smile on your face. Woo, glory to God, when you get up and you say, I've been to Calvary. Glory to God, that's what I'm after. I ain't after your money and your things. I'm after to tell you, praise God, that the blood that Jesus shed upon Calvary is more than enough for you. That's the Lord telling me to shut up now. <laughs> we'll let them sing. Where's your heart? Are you ready tonight? You want to come pray? We'll pray with you. But I want you to know this. God loves you. And the devil will tell you, ain't nobody cares about you. He's a liar, my friend. Dutch Valley Baptist Church cares about you. And God loves you. And he wants you to be free. Go ahead. Out on the
something from the Lord tonight but I want you to know something if you don't know if you ever feel like God don't love you he loves you Amen. if you ever got a need you you can get a hold of somebody at this church because we love you and we'll be here for you we'll pray for you we'll come to you whatever you need you know because you're a child of God and God loves you and if you got sinner kids you let us know and we'll pray amen glory to God I believe that I believe that we're going to see our children coming in I do. I believe we're going to see them coming back. Hallelujah. I believe it, church. I love you. Tell somebody you love them before you leave, and we'll see you uh, Sunday morning. God bless you.